Oftentimes, AFL fans associate premiership winning players with superstars. While that's typically the case, there are a handful of examples of a team winning a premiership with a not so great player on the field. Here are the worst AFL players to ever win a premiership. Billy Frampton. The 2023 Collingwood team winning the grand final proved that an AFL team can go from nearly bottom of the ladder to an AFL premiership in just two years. With one of the greatest midfields in the competition, the Magpies took down the Brisbane Lions 90-86 on the sport's biggest stage. The Collingwood midfield was so impressive that it didn't even matter that Billy Frampton featured in the forward line. Heading into that season, Frampton didn't even look likely to be a starter for the Magpies, but he appeared in 16 home and away games, the most in his career at any club. Towards the start of the year, Frampton started as a defender, but he slowly transitioned into a forward role going into finals. He kicked 7 goals 3 for the year, great for a player who kicked a horrendous 2 goals 11 only 2 seasons prior. Sadly for Frampton, he didn't score a goal for the last 4 games of the season, including the grand final. On the big day, Frampton only managed two disposals, one tackle and one behind, while spending 82% time on the ground. But to be fair to Frampton, his main job was to stop Harris Andrews from having a major impact on the game. And while Andrews had 16 disposals and 9 marks, AFL experts argue that the line would have had an even bigger impact if it wasn't for Frampton. With only 3 metres gained for the match, it's safe to say that Frampton didn't earn himself any Norm Smith votes. For a player that looked lost at Adelaide just one year prior to winning a premiership the next year, Frampton turned his whole career around with his decision to move interstate and join the Magpies. Mark Blake Mark Blake almost wasn't even eligible for this list because going into the 2009 Grand Final, Geelong looked like they had no chance of winning. I mean, St Kilda were coming off a nearly undefeated season, losing only two games, each by under a goal. But the Cats' accurate 12 goals 8 beat St Kilda's inaccurate 9 goals 14 to win Blake his first and only Premiership. Now, Blake's stats don't look too bad on paper. 9 disposals, 19 hitouts and 1 tackle. But it's his actual play style that was the problem. He was extremely slow and his kicking action was subpar at best. He just didn't look that good in general play. The fact that the crowd would go crazy when Blake would get a disposal says a lot. But Geelong's Ruckman were constantly injured throughout the 2009 season, giving Blake his spot in the team going into finals. Although he has a bad reputation, I have to agree that Mark Blake is definitely not one of the worst players on this list. I can't say the same for Aaron Keating. Similar to Billy Frampton, Keating was not a starting player for Adelaide heading into the season that they won the Premiership. In fact, he was playing for Norwood in the SANFL before a run of injuries and the suspension of Ruckman David Pittman saw Keating get the call up for Adelaide's 1997 prelim final against the Western Bulldogs. Just his second AFL game. Keating's first game was all the way back in round 1. While playing his part as one of Adelaide's Ruckman in their 1997 grand final win, Keating made history in the process, becoming one of only a handful of players who failed to register a single disposal in a grand final, let alone win one. Keating made his impact in other areas though, with 3 hitouts and a tackle, but he also gave away one free. To be fair to Keating, he was only on the ground for 15 minutes, as this was at a time where each team had three Ruckmen. What a great first season. Three wins, including a prelim and grand final, and no losses. With only seven disposals in total, and a behind to his name. He even won a premiership for Norwood one week later. If only the rest of Keating's career went like that grand final did. The very next season, in 1998, Keating played even better, averaging 6 disposals and even kicking a goal in the 3 games of football he played. But after round 6, Keating was delisted from the Crows, never appearing in another AFL game ever again. 
he shortly retired soon after. Mitch Morton In 2012, Mitch Morton was about as average an AFL player as you'll ever see. He missed out on the first 20 games of the season while stuck in the Swans reserve team. Morton played for West Coast in 2006 previously, missing out on a potential premiership after not making the grand final team. But when it came to the 2012 grand final, Morton made it into selection, and he made sure to turn it up a notch on the big stage. Morton kicked two consecutive goals nearing half time to give Sydney all the momentum going into the big break. While only seeing 60% time on the ground, it was an incredible goal tally from a player who'd failed to kick a single goal in Sydney's prelim final the week prior. And we can't forget his four important tackles either. His swans were victorious and became AFL premiers partly thanks to his heroics. Before joining Sydney, Morton had played for two different teams with his inconsistency to blame for this. Some years he would look great, and others not so much. For example, in 2009 he was Richmond's leading goalscorer, kicking 41 goals and even outscoring Jack Rewalt. But sadly for Morton, he couldn't even lead them to a final, as the Tigers finished second to bottom on the ladder that year. Morton was dropped from the Swan side after round 22 that premiership year and believes he wouldn't have made it back into the team if Geelong hadn't thumped Sydney by 34 points the very next round. While Morton's actual grand final performance was pretty great, it was his subpar career leading into it that puts him on this list. Cam Mooney Cam Mooney actually managed to lead his team to grand final victories three different times across his career. The first came in 1999 with North Melbourne, his first season in the AFL. During that season, Mooney kicked just two goals and picked up three tackles in the 11 games he played. In comparison, he gave away five frees in that time. Mooney nearly didn't make it into the grand final side. He played in North's 44 point qualifying final win over Port Adelaide, but was dropped for the Kangaroos prelim final against Brisbane. The only reason he made it back in was because key forward Jason McCartney received a one match suspension for striking in that prelim. Mooney's season wasn't great, even though North won an impressive 10 games and only lost one in the games he featured in, he definitely wasn't the reason for it. But at least he recorded some stats in these games. In the grand final, he didn't record a single stat. No goals, no points, no marks, no tackles, no disposals. Well, he did do something. He gave away a free kick. After starting the match, Mooney was quickly dragged off by coach Dennis Pagan and had to wait three whole quarters to return. With five minutes left, Pagan put him back on. But after Mooney elbowed Carlton goal kicker Simon Beaumont, giving away a free in the process, he was quickly dragged off the field by Kangaroo's runner. And he never returned. Mooney blamed his poor start to his career on not working hard enough and not making the most of his talent at North Melbourne. For a man who went on to kick five goals and be arguably one of the best, if not the best, players in the 2007 Grand Final, it's without a doubt that Cam Mooney redeemed his poor 1999 Grand Final performance entirely. Who do you think is the worst AFL player to ever win a Premiership? Let me know with a comment down below, and subscribe for more videos like this one.